Hello and welcome to a look at one a man and his android, or the Commodore 64. The game that was released by Master Tonic. The plot thing of this game, or objective rather, is that you have flown to the planet Andromedus with your droid to capture Ramboids, a male form of alien sheep. They only have an active life form of 20 minutes, so to teleport them back to Earth in a suitable form, you have to move fast. Your first task in the game is to try and enter the cavern so you can actually capture the Ramboids and uh, in front of such cabin there are hundreds if not thousands of rampaging ramboids trying to block your access to the cabin and they are moving left and right and down and uh, if you get trapped by a wave moving down you can get pushed all the way down to the bottom of the screen and if you are pushed well, fully to the left or to the right there will be an energy kind of fuel thing that will force you as well to fall all the way down to the bottom of the screen so you have to start the climb back up again basically a nightmare, a nightmare version of the frogger if you like once you have finally reached the entrance to the cave you will be given your objective which is to uh, capture the six ramboids or seven I think it's seven. I can count. It's seven. Yeah, indeed. And if you look at the interface, you can see on the left hand side that there is a listing of the different ramboids, and that is the order in which they ideally should be caught in. In order to complete the level, you will have to capture four of them in correct order. So basically, you have the option to miss up three, as long as the remaining four are in consecutive order. Or ideally you would want to get the first four in correct order so that you can actually be considered to have completed the level. But beyond that you still need to make sure to capture every single one point on the screen. Now RAM points are not exactly the most clever uh, race in the world and uh, they have a quite interesting movement pattern. They like to go right and up if given the option, or uh, down and left if given the option. And you have to make sure to uh, position yourself in such a way that um, they find the correct version of up and right or down and left to be in the general direction of the teleporter. In order to do that, you will likely have to run around and uh, basically babysit or herd, to use a proper term, the sheep towards the teleporter. If you don't get them caught in the correct order, you will be forced to restart the level until you get it right, which I will showcase here, not by intent, but uh, that is exactly what happens in the first part of this. Carrying on with the interface, uh, top of the screen you have your score and then you have the timer. And that timer is more interesting than you might think. Well, maybe not interesting, but I will get back to that later on. The bar to the right indicates uh, round boys you have already caught. And then at the bottom of the screen you have your droid interface. The four options available are fly, which will allow you to navigate the screens. Kick, which will allow you to kick your droid into the service you are currently on in order to allow uh, droids to pass over you. And then of course you have the tunnel option where you can tunnel your way through walls in order to open up paths. Sometimes it's a good thing to do and sometimes it is an incredibly obnoxiously wrong thing to do because you can basically open up access allowing the Run boards to uh, run around in more or less endless loops until you find them and find out where the issue is and nudge them in the correct direction. 
From a graphical point of view, and bear in mind of course this is a game from 1985 and it is also a cheap range game so your expectations will have to be somewhat tempered. I think the graphics work. You can easily identify different vampires because not only have they got different colors, they also have different details attached to them. The droid itself, I suppose, I mean, uh, I don't know what your expectations is of what a droid should look like, but I will happily accept that it's a droid. The backgrounds and all the kind of stuff, it's supposed to be a cabin, and it's cabin-like enough for me, so I will happily take it as it is. The sound effects are more mini jingles than anything else, and uh, I don't find them particularly enjoyable. I don't dislike them, but I don't like them either. But of course that leads us on to the music. Um, both the music and sound effects, of course, were delivered by the legendary master himself, Mr. Rob Hopper. And while the tune may be a bit donkey and hip for a game of this type, the tune itself is easily one of my top three favorite Rob Hubbard from those 64 tunes. It basically showcases in many ways just what the Commodore 64 set chip was capable of, but that is another thing I will return to momentarily. The controls are fine. Left, right, up, down, so move left, right, up, down when you are in fly mode. If you are not in fly mode, you can only move left and right, and if you go down a tunnel, you will fall down until you reach the bottom of it. Fire to switch between the different droid modes and hold down fire for the fourth effect, which is to let you know where the other or the remaining vampires are so you know where to go look for them and uh, try to nudge them in whatever direction you need to nudge them in. The Commodore was incredibly lucky because um, the individual they tasked to designing the sound chip for the Commodore 64 just happened to have a background in professional synthesizers and fairly obviously when he was tasked with designing a sound chip he was thinking synthesizers. And for all intents and purposes, the sound interface device chip or SIT is a three voice synthesizer chip. And in that regard, when it comes to synth music, especially amongst the 8 bit systems, nothing comes remotely close to the capabilities of the Pogo 64 sound chip. And that is a blessing when it comes to this game. The puzzle element of one man and his toy is not something I find particularly enjoyable because of the fact that the sheep are running around willy nilly, because of the fact that you need to have a certain knowledge of the layout of the level so you don't tunnel in the wrong directions, effectively creating endless dukes for the sheep to run around willy nilly in. The fact that you on top of that have to make sure that the sheep get teleported in at uh, predetermined order is something I find incredibly frustrating. Add to that that later levels have more obstacles to deal with on... Ugh, no, 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 no. This game is most assuredly not for me, but thankfully Rob Hubbard stepped in and made sure that the £1.99 paid for this game wasn't entirely wasted. On that note, thanks for watching, take care, see you next time. Bye-bye for now.